I've gone overboard on these California mobsters, but I promise this will be the last one for a while. The problem is you start doing research on one guy, and while you're doing the research, you see something interesting. Go, ah, I've got to come back and do that. I've done. A, I've written a lot on Marshall Caifano, who was uh, almost royalty in the Chicago mob. Him and his brothers. Caifano uh, was eventually, when when Gene Connor came to power, was sent out to Las Vegas. Uh, to be what they call the outside man, the enforcer, the sheriff for the various mobs in who were operating in Las Vegas in those days. Uh, it was in the late 40s. He stayed through the early 50s. He, uh, Tony Arcota's last words to him were, don't do anything to scare the fucking tourists, but it's exactly what he did. He walked around like a cock on the roost and he was blackballed. He was forbidden placed into the black book, couldn't go to any of the he, casinos. So he sued to get himself off the black book list. I mean, the guy was a mess. Finally, they sent him back to Chicago. He just was more than anyone wanted to deal with. However, what had happened earlier, uh, there was an eight-man gangster squad, it was called. It was created by the LA Police Department in 1946 to keep East Coast Mafia organized crime guys out of LA. The squad basically waged war on organized crime guys. Uh, they did things that would be considered highly illegal by today's standards. Sergeant Jack O'Mara said, we did a lot of things to get you indicted today. Sergeant Willie Burns, who was on the squad, said, the deal was this. If they signed on, the cops, they'd continue to be listed on the roster in their old stations. They'd have no office, only two unmarked cars. They almost never made arrests. They simply gather intelligence and be available for other chores. And he, uh, in effect, they didn't exist, he said. According to this guy, uh, who another member, uh, Sergeant Gias Copazzi, the la who was the last surviving member, Lindo Gias Copazzi, who was the last surviving member of the squad, he said what they would do was they'd meet out-of-town gangsters coming in. As people just didn't fly as much in those days. Uh, they'd meet him at the Union Station, and this is in quotes, we'd have a little talk with them in the basement of the Parker Center, which I think is the police department, before sending them back on the train. So O'Mara, remember there was one group, he called them tourists, were going around to these landmarks, uh, the Macambo Lodge, the Brown Derby, and telling the club owners, we want 25% ownership, or we'll kill you or beat you senseless or whatever. So they didn't want any trouble they didn't want to disrupt business and they went secretly to the gangster squad and said can you do something about this so what o'hara omara rather said was they took the uh, he said the view was great from the hills of mulholland drive <laughs> uh, so why not escort these hoodlums up there and have a little heart to heart with them emphasize the fact that this wasn't new york this wasn't chicago this wasn't cleveland and we leaned on them a little bit you know what i mean up in the Hollywood Hills, off Coldwater Canyon, anywhere up there. And it was dark at night. In the darkness, O'Mara said he would put a kind of gun, a kind of gun, uh, to the ear of the hood and say, you want to sneeze, a kind of a gun. He put a gun to their ear. Uh, that was O'Mara's signature thing, a gun in the ear and saying, do you want to sneeze? A really loud sneeze. So on January 17th, Marshall Caifano, comes into L.A. from Las Vegas. Uh, according to him, he was just there to, to go shopping. That's the kind of guy he was. And he checked into the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. So they wanted him out. Everybody wanted Caifano out. Uh, O'Meara went there. They arrested him for uh, failure to register as a convicted felon. Um, however, there was the rumor was they had intelligence that he was actually there to kill somebody. So according to O'Meara, he took him up to Coldwater Canyon for, quote, a chat, chat. O'Meara was kind of a big guy. Um, Caifano, I met him once. He was, uh, I'll exaggerate and say he was 5'2". I don't think he was, he, he was a little, he, he looked like a Martian. Uh, I'm not being mean, but he, he had no chest, no muscles. No, now, in fairness, I met him when he was very old, but... Uh, retired in Florida, but he had this enormous head. Another guy I met who had an enormous head while we're on this was Teddy Kennedy, but that's a, but he was a 
bear. He was a big guy. Anyway, Caifano had this little big head, and um, he was a punk. I mean, he he uh, he, he beat people up just they they wouldn't fight back because of who he was. But that didn't work with him.